a source of wisdom beyond what we are capable of thinking and manipulating, a life-created force that makes your sacrifices, even your suffering, meaning-filled. This is the bridge, I believe, that a violent, confused world is calling focusers to be leaders in building, because focusing can open the door of this experience, this mysticism for the millions. And finally, let me share a short personal felt sense story taken from my book, Beyond the Myth of Dominance, so you will better understand why the phrase, a 21st century renaissance, is in our subtitle. For decades, I carried around a felt sense about the historical period after the Dark Ages, the period we call the Renaissance. It pulled me into exploring everything I came across about that period in history. I was always puzzled by this strange attraction because it, felt so, it, it was so full of personal contradictions. I found that the art was not something that expressed my taste, yet I would return to it again and again. The architecture was too overwhelming, but I could spend hours in the body feel of it, especially in Italy. I was again drawn into so many remarkable people recognizing that during the, this period, who blossomed as though, wait, waiting, oh, as though waking from a long winter night. Thousands developed talents that previously lay dormant, endure, enduring even today, not only in the wonders of engineering and masonry and sculpture, but in the literature and sciences then being born. It always felt Inside me, like there was a personal story in all these incredible achievements of the human spirit. A story waiting to speak directly within me. Maybe a clue to better experiencing what biospirituality is all about. But it never revealed itself until one beautiful spring morning when sitting on the porch of a farmhouse near Cortona, Italy. Pete and I had rented the former stables on the bottom floor in this picturesque 16th century stone building overlooking the Chianti Valley. I was reading about Leonardo da Vinci's spectacular engineering feat in draining the valley below, which previously had been a malaria-infested swamp. And that draining system is still working today. Then, on a memorable page of this part history book, part guidebook, the author wrote something to the effect that the Renaissance came into being because a wide enough threshold of awareness had evolved in so many people that a level of consciousness surfaced sufficient for a movement to be born. And that breakthrough, that level of consciousness, the author wrote, that so many people during the Renaissance rediscovered the divine within their own humanity. They felt connected to a larger body, to a greater presence. Suddenly, he wrote, a massive explosion of self-esteem and human potential in God was let loose. I recall the author saying that people again took pride in being a part of God. Dust-covered dreams and the human body's spirit connected within this experience of being living selves within this larger body and its felt presence within them. Then the impossible felt possible. For me, the felt shift the connection finally had come. That vague, fuzzy feeling of something more moved into excitement and an easing in my body. 
I stood up amazed at what had happened as I walked thoughtfully down the dirt road toward the ancient walls of Cortona and the fresh food I needed to get, to get from the local farmers in the town square. <coughs> My eye caught the magnificent dome of an abandoned church below me, now in an olive garden, but still greater than most contemporary cathedrals. My mind wandered back to my favorite Jenlin quote, in which he described how focusing could build this bridge that once fueled the Renaissance. He wrote, and I quote, your physically felt body is, in fact, part of a gigantic system of here and other places, now and other times, you and other people. In fact, the whole universe. This sense of being bodily alive in a vast system is your body as it can be felt from inside." End quote. Ed asked himself at that point, how I might be able to live that and then pass that on to others is what I have explored for years. And may the workbook help you find this experience because hope lies not in your mind's ability to understand nor in the certitude that everything is going to turn out the way you want it to. Rather, it lies in the deep down body sense that what is happening to you now has meaning and is gift. For that to occur, your body needs to feel connected within some larger body with a history and a story that includes but extends far beyond your few years here on this earth. Then your life in this moment as part of this organically felt presence in history feels really precious, no matter how scary or painful it is, because you find yourself no longer alone. So as focusers, I believe this historic time of enormous change calls us to take responsibility for the leadership we can provide in making this 21st century renaissance possible. And then he just scribbled on the bottom there, he said, I thank you for the invitation to let us share this at this conference. something that is folded into the body. That's what this is about, the implications. And I want to weave together two themes. The first one is how do Ed and I view the interface between focusing and spirituality? And the second one is what are the important body learnings that we have come to about teaching this interface? There are three specifics in Jean's work that tie this all together. 
his identification of the felt sense, his realization that symbol interacts with the felt sense. See, symbol interacts with the felt sense. Symbol does not equate with the felt sense. That's a powerful and important learning. If, if a symbol only equated with the felt sense, then it's like it would be the mirror mental image of what's out there. That's not its function. A symbol interacts with a felt sense. And when it can do that, the felt sense can then move forward. It's very important to catch that distinction. It's extremely important. And finally, I wanted to identify Gene's discovery of process skipping structures. This is something in his work that I have never really heard anyone in the focusing community talk about. But it's so important to realize process skipping structures are what messes up, messes us up when trying to feel our own feelings. And th let me give you an il illustration of that. Okay, I was invited to give a program to fifth graders because their teacher was in our focusing program. And at one point I asked them, what do you do in order not to feel your feelings? And boy, I was absolutely overwhelmed with what came back. I jog. I phone, get on the phone with my friends, I read a book, I sing, I dance, I play with my cat, on and on and on. They had process skipping down the path. They knew exactly how not to feel their feelings. And where did they learn that? From us. <laughs> 